Hello chicas, welcome back. I hope everyone is doing good. So I've been receiving lots of questions on these C-curve nail tips. How I work with them, how I apply the acrylic, how I shape them, and you know, how, you know, just the whole shebang. So this is what the nail tips look like, you guys. They're the extra long C-curve nail tips which are still available on my website go and check them out my etsy shop will be linked in the description box so um this is what they look like you guys they're pretty long and they are pretty c curved so as you can see i already have them here glued to my natural nails and um i already have a small layer of crystal clear acrylic just so that it protects my nail um so I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna start off by cutting off you know a small just a tiny little part of the of the tip you guys because um I mean it all depends on what your client wants but this is what I wanted to do today so that's pretty much what I'm gonna be cutting off the tip so to achieve a tapered squared which is pretty much a straight squared nail uh, all I do, you guys, is grab my scissors. Just use whatever scissors you have, um, and I just cut the sides. I'm not gonna cut. I'm not gonna be cutting too much of that, you guys, because again, we're gonna be making a tapered squared. I'm not making my scissors straight, you guys. I'm actually kind of like, you know, um, laying them down. If that makes sense, just making my my scissors to be like kind of flat because since these tips do have a curve you can't really cut the tip straight with the scissors you know being straight if that makes sense so that's how much i cut off the tip you guys like i said I, i'm not gonna be cutting way too much of that because again we are making a tapered square so i'm just gonna take this file and i'm gonna be shaping it pretty much just going in you guys going in with the file with the hand file and um just making my hand file pretty much straight from the sidewall of my natural nail all the way down to the tip of the nail and this is just what works for me this is how i work with them and this is what has helped me work with these type of nail tips um you know everybody has a different way of working and a different way of just doing things you know um so yeah i mean this is what works for me and I'm, of course i'm here to share what i what has worked for me so there you go you guys as you guys can see super easy super simple there's not much cutting to do and there's not much filing to do because all we're trying to achieve is a square nail a tapered square so this is pretty much what it looks like and what it should be looking like as of right now so we're gonna move on to my middle nail so this one i wasn't really sure if i should go in with the um, with the stiletto or with the coffin so i just decided to go in with the coffin so i'm gonna be cutting off a little more for the to achieve the coffin so as you guys can see i'm cutting off like if it were to be a triangle like look this is what it looks like you guys that's what it should look like to achieve a coffin you know it's looking like a triangle so i'm gonna be doing the exact same thing on the other side of the tip and again just grabbing my scissors like i told you at the beginning as to where i don't really make them straight so again just cutting off or snipping off a little bit of that uh triangle shape <laughs> if that makes sense i'm just trying to make it as easy as possible you guys because again you guys have been commenting on how i work with these type of tips and how i shape them how you know just the whole just everything so um it was pretty hard for me at the beginning to work with them but as you know as you go on and you keep practicing and you keep using them with yourself and your clients it just starts to become easier every day so as for the coffin you guys i do kind of grab my file and make it like kind of tilt it you can see what i'm doing here it's not as straight so i'm not because of course we're not going for a tapered squared 
I am kind of tilting my file and making it go kind of like under the nail, if that makes sense. Um, so just kind of tilt your hand file and start shaping it, shape, shape, shape. And this is what it should be looking like as for right now. I wasn't so satisfied, so I went back in with my hand file and tried to make that coffin a little more coffin, <laughs> not so straight. Uh, so yeah, I went back in with my hand file and I'm just shaping it, you guys. Just, you know, it's just super easy. Yeah, sometimes you just have to be a little patient with these type of tips. Um, and I'm just going to be removing, you know, any little axis of tip left behind you can see there that you know as you go and file uh you there there is little pieces of tip behind the nail so that's why i like to go under the nail with my file you saw what i did there and then of course i just go back in with my file and perfect the tip of the nail you can actually start seeing the difference there from the tapered to the coffin so now I'm going to go back and shape my ring finger, which in this case we're going to be doing stiletto. I decided to only do these three shapes, you guys, because these are the three most common shapes that we usually get, you guys, as nail techs. So I just decided to shape these three. So as you guys can see, of course, we're going to be cutting off more. And this, and this time we are cutting a bigger triangle. <laughs> that's the easiest way for me to explain it to you guys so you can see that I'm cutting way more look that's how much I'm cutting I'm cutting off so that we can achieve a really nice stiletto so again you guys just trying to perfect just trying to achieve that uh, stiletto tip which stiletto to me is a little bit more work because of course you have to file a little a little bit more uh, because of course we don't want our stiletto to look almond or to look rounded or anything you really want that stiletto to look very pointy so we really want to achieve that so just keep on filing until you have your desired stiletto some people don't like them as pointy and some people do for me I really do like my stiletto to be very pointy and a lot of my clients do too so i really try to get it as pointy as possible <laughs> but if you guys don't like it as pointy i guess you can stop right there i really want to know quick question here by the way <laughs> i really want to know who else does gang signs when they're shaping their nails i'm pretty sure a lot of us do like really you guys every single time i'm shaping my nails I throw so many gang signs that I don't even know half of them. <laughs> but yeah, I really want to know that you guys cuz it's just it's just so funny, really, the way the way we grab our like I don't know, the way we we grab our our our, our fingers when we're shaping our nails and stuff. It's just weird. But you know, again, everybody has a different way of working and a different way of doing things. And this is just me, but really, I just want to know who else does that. Tell me down below. Tell me in the comments. So I've already shaped them, you guys. I've already shaped all three shapes, <laughs> all three most popular shapes. Uh, and I'm just going to be dusting everything off. As you guys can see there, there's like little nail tip left at the bottom of the, of the nail. That's what I was telling you before. Uh, so I just like to go under with the file. And this is what they should be looking like as for right now. Um, so this is pretty much what I do to shape them. So now I'm going to go in with a acrylic, just trying to work my acrylic uh, to show you guys the way I work with them and how I apply the acrylic on them and stuff. Super easy, you know, just pretty much super easy stuff, you guys. There's nothing to it, really. So I start off with my first bead, 
So I'm going to start off with the with the first bead uh, right there around the apex area, a little, a little lower than the apex area. Uh, so I'm just going to try and, you know, just mold it and brush it down, brush it down the tip. So um, for this, I'm using Valentino's, I think it's called Princesita. And my monomer is from Glam and Glitz. For some reason, it was drying super fast. Even though my room wasn't even cold, it wasn't even hot. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. It was just pretty much a regular uh, temperature in there. So I don't know what the heck was going on. But I thought it was drying super fast. So I'm just applying it here as you guys can see. I'm going to be applying a second bead around the tip because you guys saw that the first bead that I had applied, it didn't go all the way down to exactly the tip. So I just went ahead and added a small bead right there on the tip. And of course you always have to watch your sidewalls every single time you watch your sidewalls. Trust me, you are going to have less filing to do, less perfecting to do. So um, every every single bead that you go ahead and apply and you brush it down the nail, you need to remove any access from the sidewalls because it's just much easier and it's going to keep the shape. It's not going to like, it's not going to deform the shape if that makes sense so just make sure that you wipe the sidewalls from any axis of acrylic so i'm gonna be applying this bead which is gonna be my third bead <laughs> um here exactly on the apex area that's the apex area okay so let me explain a little about the apex area you guys the apex area is how many times can i say that <laughs> <laughs> um okay so that's where you glue on your tip your false tip to your natural nail that's gonna be the strongest point of any nail of any shape so make sure that when you look at your nail from the side view your nail is gonna be looking thin on the cuticle area thick which is called the apex area thick around that area that's when it's going to be, again, thicker. And then going down the nail is going to be looking thinner. Just make sure that the pancita or that, you know, it's going to be looking a little, a little chunky there. <laughs> and, you know, because, of course, you want that strength to be there. Just in case, you know, you hit your nail, you know, you have... I mean, with long nails, you're always going to be bumping them everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but, you know, you do have accidents here and there. So, of course, you don't want that coming off your natural nail because it's really going to hurt. And it might really, you might have a bad injury from that. Uh, so, just make sure that you have the right thickness to the nail uh, on that area, on that apex area, so that we can prevent any accidents. As you guys saw there, I showed you that there's more acrylic missing around this area, which is natural. Every single time you're using these nail, these C-curved nail tips, you're always going to see that like well, I guess you can say that. I guess that's the best way I can describe it right now. Um, so just make sure that you add a little bit more acrylic around that area and you'll be good to go. So that would be the tapered squared, as you guys can see, and I've already fixed that pro that problem. <laughs> so yeah, this is what they look like as of right now. I'm going to be applying a little more acrylic onto the cuticle area because, of course, I really wanted that apex area to be very well done. And, you know, again, because I really want to prevent any type of accidents. So I'm just applying a little more of acrylic there around that area nothing crazy nothing or just not a super huge bead so as you guys can see it already built it up that apex area so moving on to my coffin we're gonna start off again like we did with the first nail which was a tapered squared and i'm gonna be applying my first bead here right below that apex area and just trying to mold it so that it reaches all the way down whenever i brush it down to the tip 
So as you guys see here, I'm just trying to brush it down, trying to move it around, and again, cleaning my sidewalls. Make sure to clean those sidewalls, you guys. I cannot express this enough. Please go and clean your sidewalls for every single bead you apply and, you're, and you brush it down. Don't forget to clean your sidewalls. That's really going to help your shape. That's really going to reduce your time in filing. Please clean your sidewalls. So um, I am not, I'm actually working here in real time. I didn't make it faster or anything. This is real time. And this video is going to be 30 minutes long because I really wanted to make it very detailed and that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I didn't really want to leave anything out. So I really want to express everything that I need to express here about these um, C-curve nail tips because again, I've been receiving a lot of comments asking me how do I work with them? How do I apply acrylic? How do I shape them? So again i didn't want to leave anything out so yeah you guys as you guys can see i went ahead and added a small bead there at the tip of the nail again because the first bead that i had applied did not reach all the way down so i went ahead and added a second bead on around that area kind of brushing it down one more time any axis of acrylic i just go ahead and remove it with my finger i know a lot of you are gonna tell me that don't do that um you're, you can get an allergic reaction guys i've really i've i've been working with nails for the past uh close to eight years and uh, you know gracias a dios thank god that nothing like that has ever happened to me i have had clients that have happened to them but um i was using other products and that was my bad <laughs> but now you know i'm using glam and glitz and that has really i don't know i don't really don't know what it is you guys but that has really helped out my clients a lot like a lot you know client i had one specific client that she would always have like allergic reactions to monomers and ever since i started using this brand this brand literally just saved my saved my nail career you guys saved my client because she was about to go somewhere else <laughs> so she stuck with me she's here with me and stuff so i'm really happy um but anyway you guys you guys can see again that there's like a little well like going down so i'm gonna be applying more acrylic here on this area not that big of a bead but you know try to make it pretty pretty generous if that makes sense so i'm just gonna try and blend it upwards you know going upwards towards the cuticle area and then i'm gonna blend it one more time going down towards the tip and that's just gonna build up my nail if there's more acrylic needed for you to apply don't hesitate on applying more acrylic you know there's no rules to nails there's there's no rules where they tell you you know what you need to apply only three beads only one bead only two beads no if there is more acrylic needed don't think twice of adding more you guys don't don't that's one mistake that i would do when i first began here on the nail world that they would tell me the three ball method the two ball method the one ball method and you know that really stuck to my head for a while until i started practicing more and more and more and i was like you know what no you know the heck with this like if if i need more acrylic i'm gonna apply more acrylic so don't let little things like that you know stop you from applying more if you need more go ahead and apply more okay there's no rules you guys there's no rules you do whatever is best for you and you do whatever works for you so my whole point here <laughs> is that don't be afraid to add more acrylic if needed so as you guys can see i'm already working on the stiletto the stiletto is pretty much the same thing you guys uh, I just started off there a little lower from the apex area, applied my first bead. I'm just trying to blend it down. My second bead will be going a little above that first bead. And then my third bead is going to be going exactly on the cuticle area. I don't know if you guys want a detailed video about how, apply, how to apply acrylic on the cuticle area, which pretty much 
this is it you guys pretty much this is what i do i just place down my bead not too wet not too dry you know you don't want it to dry really fast not too wet either because if it's too wet it's gonna flood your cuticles and of course that's what we're trying to avoid so um i just kind of move it from side to side to fill in that space around the cuticle area and you know just brush it down pretty much that's pretty much what i do you guys there's not really any trick or anything it's just practice honestly and again when i first began here on the nail world um this is one of my this was one of my biggest issues the cuticle area the cuticle area would always be flooded it was never right you know it was just crazy but just practice you guys that's all it is um and again just wiping your side walls make sure to wipe your side walls i will remind you this every single time wiping your side walls will make your shape it you know i think that's one of the things that either makes or breaks your shape because um you know you're leaving all that acrylic there and your fi the filing process is going to be a lot longer so of course we don't want that we don't want to sit there for a whole hour trying to you know just trying to file off any lumps and bumps so you know so this is what it, they look like as of right now which you know like i like like i said there's not gonna be that much filing to do so i'm gonna start off with my panna this is a medium grid file it's a five in one and it is a safety bit it does not cut and I love it. Ever since I've got it, ever since I purchased this drill bit, I have never put it down. This is what I use use on myself. This is what I use on my clients. This is what I use overall, you guys. I have not switched to another drill bit. I don't use anything else but this. I love the finish. I love just the way it, it files the nails. I love, like I said, just... Just everything about it, you guys. You can find this Panna 5-in-1 drill bit on Amazon or eBay. Um, and it is really good. It just really helps you really get in there uh, around the cuticle area. Um, it just really helps me perfect the shape on the sidewalls. As you can see, I'm going on, you know, around the side, on the sidewalls. Just so that it is a very, just very straight. And I also like to go like under the tip just so that you can see uh, the C curve or that there's no acrylic stuck under there. So that's pretty much how I file. Super easy, you know, not hard. So again, you know, just trying to shape, shape, shape. Um, like I said before, if you try to perfect your shape whenever you're applying your acrylic, there's not going to be a lot filing to do, you guys. So just make sure that you don't leave that many bumps and lumps behind so that your filing process is a lot shorter. And I'm just going, like I said, around the sidewalls just so that I remove any axis of acrylic stuck in there and just perfecting the shape overall. So I'm going to go in with the middle nail, which is going to be the coffin nail. And I again, I start off at the cuticle area. Okay, I just want you to see, you guys, that I did create the cuticle area way too thin. And that's what happens. You leave a bald spot. So don't leave your cuticle area way too thin because that's what's going to happen. Just make sure that you it's not as thin or it's not as thick, you know. So... It's pretty much the same process with, you know, that I did on the index finger on the tapered squared nail. And I'm um, just removing any axes, going over the nail just so that it's really smooth and just so that it it's very, very coffin. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to let you guys watch this process. I did the exact same thing on the stiletto, on the stiletto nail. And sometimes I have a very hard time trying to explain to you guys what I'm doing. And I am so sorry. I just really want to step in there and tell you some words in Spanish and some words in English. And it is pretty hard. So I'm just going to let you guys watch this process and I'll be right back with you guys.
So after I'm done with the drill, I go ahead and go back and perfect the shape using the same file that I showed you way at the beginning, the one we used to shape them. So I'm just going to go in, you know, I just like to go back in there and make sure that everything is nice and shaped, uh, that there's no acrylic stuck under the nail, that, you know, sometimes the drill it cuts your half, your time in half. I'm sorry. It cuts your time in half. But I don't know, you guys. I, I have this habit of going back in with my file, with my hand file, and just perfecting everything. Um, so that's what you see me doing here. I believe it's a hundred, 100 and 150 nail grid file, which it is, you know, it's not, it's very coarse. So it just really helps me perfect that shape. So after this, I'm going to go in with 150, 150 nail grid file. And, um, and this is what really helps me create a smoother nail, a smoother uh, canvas, if, if you will. Um, sometimes the drill bit leaves those harsh lines left behind and I don't want that. I really want a really smooth surface. So this really helps me get in there and just create a very smooth nail. So um, this is pretty much what I'm doing and perfecting the tip, perfecting the sides. I just really like to perfect my shape, you guys. I don't know why, um, but it just really, really helps me get uh, a really smooth surface. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing with this file. And then I'm going to go in with a buffer and just buff the surface one more time. And this is really going to get in there and this is really going to make my surface really really smooth so that's what I'm going to be doing after I'm done with that I remove the dust and then I go in with a lint free wipe and a little bit of alcohol and just remove any dust left behind any particles left behind um, because of course we want our nails to be either really shiny or really matte uh, so this is what the nails look like you guys so as you guys saw, it's not even that hard. I mean, it just takes practice. Just don't give up. Keep on practicing. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. I can't say that enough, you guys. So I went ahead and added a little bit of cuticle oil because my cuticles were looking really crusty. And, and this is what it is, you guys. I really hope this video really helps you guys and i really hope you enjoy it thank you so much for being here i will see you on the next one stay safe god bless and bye bye